Good morning, Jordan. How are you doing today? Good morning, Arrow. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, man, if you were sitting inside this studio with me right now, you would see all of my childhood toys sitting right here. I mean, I, I, I love toys. Well, I actually might have to come visit you then because I love toys. You know what? This is a match made in heaven, you and I talking. <laughs> See, my, my problem is, though, is that my number one love for a toy is an is a acrobatic elephant called Mumbo Jumbo. And, and man, I search everywhere. I've got like 12 of these things now because I, I, I don't want anybody to have them. I want them all. Mumbo Jumbo. Oh, tell me more about that. When did that come out? Well, it had to have been during the early part of the 1970s because uh, Cindy Brady had it on the Brady Bunch, okay. and and so and what it was. Yes. And and so and I I have I, I had one and I kept it uh, hidden away. But then when eBay came around, all of a sudden I started buying them all. The Mumbo Jumbo. Yeah, yeah. And because of Cindy Brady. Oh, uh, you know there were toys from that. The, the Kitty Carryall dolls were yes. really popular too because of the Brady the Brady Bunch. So that's fantastic. You know what? I got to tell you, you are going to love History Channel's The Toys That Built America, season two. We, we're premiering Sunday night, October 23rd. I got to tell you, you've got to check this out because this is all of our favorite childhood toys that nice. we grew up with from the 60s, from the 70s, from the 80s. We, you know, we cover everything from dolls to action figures to even, you know, tech toys and, and arcade toys in the video game market. It's great stuff. Are you, are you going to touch on Tonka trucks too? Because Tonka trucks have been around since God, I think the birth of time. Uh, you know they have been around. For, I think we did that season one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're doing it this season. But you know what? It, this is something that we didn't do it. We'll come back and do it season three. I'll I'll put a note in with the History Channel, <laughs> which I have absolutely no no power over them right now at all. Um, but the thing the thing is is you know. Season one, we went back to the very beginning. We covered the real inception of the toys. We we did the frisbee, the hula hoop, yeah. uh, you know that even even something like the super bounce ball, something really simple. This year, we cover all the great toys from the seventies: Star Wars, Masters of the Universe. Oh we do Cabbage Patch dolls. We do puzzles and Rubik's cubes and Erector sets and Rock'em Sock'em robots and Mousetrap and, and then we do Nintendo and Sega and, and Atari, all, all the great toys. Basically, you know what, you're going to sit and you're going to watch this se series, okay, eight episodes every Sunday night, yeah. so it's perfect time for the family. And this is what I loved about working on the show. Even though I've been doing this forever, over 35 years, I still found toys and I said, oh my God, I remember I had that. I had that, and I got excited again. You, you're going to see toys that you forgot you had or, or forgot were in the market, and you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I remember that. Yep. And that's yep. what I love about this series. Well, uh, let's let's go to those Rock'em Sock'em robots. My dad would not let the you know, my, yeah. me and my brothers fight, but he would say, though, go get the robots, and you fight there. But you don't fight in this living room. Oh, really? Yeah, he, that, that's I, how he I, we were taking I, it out on each other, through, through the Rock'em Sock'em robots. Oh. You had a different childhood than I did. I grew up with a twin brother. We beat the crap out of each other all the time. <laughs> but but we you know we cover Rock'em Sock'em robots. Let me tell you something real quick, okay? This is this. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so excited. I'm actually standing up while I'm talking. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let me tell you a story real quick. So Bert Meyer was the guy that originally designed Rock'em Sock'em robots. Okay, that toy was supposed to originally be human boxers, like human fighters. Yeah. It was going to be a boxing game. Yeah. But in 1963, here's what happened. In 1963, a boxer by the name of Davy Moore died because mm. of boxing-related injuries. So they went back and totally retooled and redesigned the game for robots. And that's, that's kind of like the really cool, oh, wow, fact I never knew that you're going to see in this series. And that's, that's cool stuff because now I will never look at Rock'em Sock'em Robots the same way again. Right, right. So do you think the reason why kids were so attracted to Light Bright was, A, that it was electric, it was the closest thing that we had to have in our own television set, and we could design things through our own imagination? Yeah, you know, the thing about Lightbright is it was really cool because it was so it was so simple, okay? It was a pegboard with lights. There was nothing really technologically advanced about it, but you know, these pegs lit up. But you were able to really create anything you wanted. And a lot of people used it as a night light, so yep, it was, yep. you know, they let you put it on at night and you can, you know, keep it on all night. You can spell out words, you can make, you know, everyone knows the commercial. You can make a flower, you can make a clown, you can make anything. And it's those toys like Lightbright 
like Lego. Yes. I mean, they really, really inspired creativity back then in the 1960s and 70s. So it, you know, there was there was nothing else like it. It was it was so simple. It was so easy to play with, and yet so many kids did it and played with it because you could just you know. It could be whatever you want it to be, yep. and that's what I really love. So true, so true. The biggest impact toys, is it Monopoly? Does Monopoly own that that, that thing, or is it going to be something that's going to be electronic? Impact, like on, on that, history? Monopoly is yeah, Monopoly's yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, you know, in other words, it's, it's our it's go-to. Also, oh, yeah. It's also, it's also, you know, in the gaming market, but it's also stuff like as simple as the hula hoop. We covered that in season one. Yeah. I mean... Everyone had a hula hoop grown up. There, there were millions and millions of them sold. You know, but this year we cover we cover games like Jenga, which actually <laughs> came from a Swahili name. You know, Kajenga. We learn about the history of Jenga and the puzzle and everything, and, and we learn all about that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I here's what I think it is. I think all toys have an impact on every person. Mm-hmm. They they all they all affect everyone differently. I had a woman who came in a couple days ago and she was looking for a pound puppy because she had it when she was a kid. And this woman was crying. She wanted a pound puppy doll uh, and, and a little dog because it reminded her of her dog. You know, and, and that's what's beautiful about, about what we do in, in these toys because everyone had a childhood and everyone has this incredible connection to their, uh, to their childhood. And um, these are great. And, and you know what? I think what I, you know, I, I told this in another interview with someone, really what I want people to take away from this show, or really what I want is I would love people to sit down and watch this show with the family yeah. because anyone with children, they're going to sit around with their kids and they're going to say, I had that. I had that when I was a kid. And it's going to really get that discussion flowing. It's going to get the kids interested in toys. And you're going to learn mm-hmm. about all these really great, compelling facts behind the toys. So... What what I I love the fact that you that you dig in for the history because I I, I just love history and I love to go to the core of of the story. Do, do you feel like you're sitting with a rock yeah. star when you start digging up the history of these things? Uh, you, you know what? It's I'll tell you, everyone on the show, not just I'm on there too, but a lot of folks. Look, we all we're all passionate about toys. Okay, yes. so you're you're talking to people who have a passion for it, and you're talking about people who are knowledgeable. So. You know, History Channel did a great job, not only in the talking heads and, and what we say to people with the facts, but it, they also did a great segment where they're recreating these things in the, the in real life. So you can watch the recreations, and, and that brings it alive for everybody. I mean, it, it's one thing to talk about it, but the way history tells the story and the narrative with these really cool and, and pretty accurate recreations, you know, it, it comes alive, okay? So, so you can really be there during that, oh, uh, that, you know, oh, my God moment. And, and, and that's really, really what I love. So, yeah, I mean, I, I loved working on the show. I, I worked with rock stars every day. Yeah. <laughs> They're great people. And the, the thing is, is that the, I, I love watching. I was with you the entire first season. I, I love it. And what happens is then I started really making sure that, that I put away my, my originals. Now, I have the original Simpsons, and I also have the original Buzz Lightyears and things like that. But, but they're put away, so it's like oh, I yeah. can't, even, can't even have them as eye candy. Oh yeah, well you know what? Take them out. Take them out. Bring them. You can display them in the box, or even if I tell people, look, I mean, Simpsons is a little more difficult because that's a blister pack, you know. But with a Buzz Lightyear, if it's in a box, yes. gently open up the box and take them out and save the box. <laughs> Those original Buzz Lightyears, you know, guys like you and I, we're not too old. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in my fifties, but I'm not. I'm not an old man yet. Right. But you know what? Toy Story. Toy Story was out relatively recently. But those original Buzz Light years, they go for about five hundred bucks Jeez. in the box. Jeez. They they're you know they're incredible. And the new and the new the new movie just came out, Lightyear, yeah. which yeah. was, you know, spin off of Toy Story and Buzz Lightyear. Wow. Dude, I'm very proud of you for doing this because you are igniting our our imaginations as grown adults, but you're also teaching the younger people that that, you know, go play. Go play. Go to a store, get a toy, play. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly, that's basically my motto. It's basically everyone, you know, we were all born with this inherent need to play. We, yeah. we all just, we need to blow off steam. We need to create. And that's what I, that's what I tell everyone. Um, I've been to this since I was 16. So I've been to this like uh, almost 40 years. Oh my God. And, and people say, what's your number one advice? You have to everyone. I said, have fun. Play, play with your <laughs> toys. Just have fun. Don't worry about anything else. But um uh, <laughs> You know, if you love toys, if you don't love toys, if you love history, just you, you got to tune in. Yeah. Okay, it, October October twenty third, Sunday, on the History Channel, it's the Toys That Built America, season two. 
your childhood is just all going to come back to you in, in, in these great eight great episodes. You're going to love it. I love it. Please come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Arrow. You My pleasure. You be brilliant today, okay? I will. I'll do my best. Thank you so much.